Alaska used to belong to Russia, but in 1867, it was sold to the United States. So today, we're answering, why did the U.S. buy Alaska? Hey, why historians, welcome back to the why in history. I'm your host, Alexander. Alaska, the largest of the U.S. states, has a very interesting history. Because of its proximity to Asia, it was actually the first part of the Americas to be settled by humans. This means all Native Americans can trace their heritage back to Alaska. These natives were undisturbed for about 20,000 years, but in the 1700s, everything would change. The year was 1741, and Vitus Bering, who was Danish, led an expedition to map the eastern part of the Russian Empire. He decided to continue east, and eventually, he discovered Alaska. Bering documented his discovery, but died on his way back. However, his legacy lives on, and many things, including a sea and glacier, are named after him. The expedition's crew brought back furs from the newly discovered land, and because those furs were deemed to be superior, many fur traders saw an opportunity. The events that followed are your typical colonization story. First, the Russians decided that instead of working for money like they would back home, they would enslave the natives. Then, 80% of the natives perished because the Russians brought over diseases they had no immunity to. Because most of the natives were dead, the Russians could just come in and take over everything with no resistance. Finally, for bonus points, the Russians tried converting the remaining natives to Christianity. In 1799, once everyone was subjugated, the colony of Russian America was established. However, the Russians never bothered to take over the interior, instead focusing solely on the coast. Pretty much the only city at this point was the capital, Novo Arhangelsk. But Russian America had one main problem. It was very far away from the large population centers, especially the Russian ones, as most of Russia's population is concentrated in Europe. Because of this, the Russian settlers had to rely on mostly American supply ships, which made Russia lose power over its colony. In the 1850s, the Russian Tsar at the time, Alexander II, decided to look for a potential buyer of the territory. He did this because it would be difficult to defend from a possible attack, which meant Russia could lose it for nothing. Realistically, the only country that could possibly take it was Canada, which belonged to the UK, and at the time, Russia hated the UK. Also, Russian America was too expensive to maintain and because of its distance, it would never be profitable. Because of Russian America's location, the only suitable buyer that wasn't the UK was the United States. In 1859, Russian diplomats held unofficial meetings with the Americans, but those meetings were soon put on hold as the US looked like it was going to fall apart. When the American Civil War broke out, Russian America's future hung in the balance, but in April 1865, the US succeeded at staying together, meaning it could finally think about expansion again. Almost two years later, the negotiations restarted, and on March 30th, 1867, a treaty for the $7.2 million purchase was signed. Interestingly, the treaty was negotiated by Secretary of State William Seward, not the President, Andrew Johnson, who was too busy. However, it took until October 18th for the treaty to be ratified by the Senate. One of the main reasons the US bought the territory was because it would distract the public from the absolutely shambolic leadership of Andrew Johnson. I mean. It isn't exactly a coincidence that the only two presidents interested in buying Alaska, James Buchanan and Andrew Johnson, have been consistently ranked as the two worst presidents in American history. Although most Americans supported the purchase, those who disagreed called it Seward's folly. Alaska would soon prove its worth at the turn of the century when gold was discovered in a number of places. As a result of the ensuing gold rush, the population doubled. Then, during World War II, a few of the Aleutian Islands were captured by Japan but Alaska's strategic position at the northern end of the Pacific would be very useful for the Allies in their fight. Finally, on January 3, 1959, Alaska became the 49th state of the United States of America. If you have any questions you want me to answer, be sure to leave them in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video, and remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.